Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be working through some precipitation reaction practice problems together. Precipitation reaction is when you have two soluble ionic compounds reacting to form a solid, which we call the precipitate, and then another soluble ionic compound. So you can see here, there's two solutions. Each of these solutions contains soluble ionic compounds. When we mix them, we formed a solid, which is the precipitate. That's where the name precipitation reaction comes from. So we're going to work through a couple of practice problems together and then by the end of this video you'll know exactly how to predict the products of precipitation reactions. Alright, so looking at these problems, the first one we have magnesium chloride reacting of sodium hydroxide. A precipitation reaction is pretty much just a double replacement. So we're going to approach this the same way as we would with a double replacement reaction. And so the first step, we're going to want to write the charges of each of the ions. Magnesium is going to have a positive 2 charge because it's in the second column of the periodic table. Chlorine is a halogen, so it's going to have a negative 1 charge. Sodium is in the first column of the periodic table, so it's going to have a positive 1 charge. And then hydroxide is a polyatomic ion with a negative 1 charge. Then you can just take your two positive charges and switch places. So you're going to get NaCl plus uh, MgOH. So notice I took the Mg and I took the Na. Essentially switched places. But one detail I want you to notice is that although there were two Cl's here, I only brought one Cl over to the other side. And the reason why I did that is because I want to make sure the charges are balanced before I add any subscripts. So now I'm going to transfer the charges over sodium positive one, chlorine negative one. You can see these already cancel each other out so there's no need to add any subscripts. Then magnesium has a positive two charge and hydroxide has a negative one charge. These do not cancel each other out so we can use the crisscross method, method to give us a neutral compound. We take the two right here and we bring it down to give us a subscript of two for the hydroxide, and then the one becomes the subscript of the magnesium. Then next, we need to predict the physical states of the two products, and that's why we have to use the solubility rules. And I included a table down here for us to quickly reference it. So first of all, we're looking at sodium chloride, and you can see that any compound containing an alkali metal is going to be soluble. So be that's going to be aqueous. Aqueous just means that the ion compound is soluble in water. Next, if we look at magnesium hydroxide, let's try to find either magnesium or hydroxide. Uh, it says that right here, hydroxides generally are insoluble, except when it's with an alkali metal or barium. Uh, magnesium is not alkali metal or barium, so that means it's going to be insoluble, making it a solid. And then lastly, we just have to balance the chemical reaction. So we just need to put a 2 right here, and everything is balanced. All right, next example, we're working with copper chloride reacting with sodium sulfate. Two ionic compounds, so this is going to be a double replacement. The so first step, write the charges. Uh, chlorine, since the halogen is negative 1, and since we have two chlorines, this makes it negative 2, which means that copper has to be a positive 2. Then sodium is positive 1 and sulfate is a polyatomic ion with a charge of negative 2. Then we take our two positive ions and switch places and that's, that's going to give us uh, cobalt sulfate and sodium chloride. Notice that the positive charge always goes first and that's always the case when you're working with ionic compounds. Next we transfer the charges over, copper is positive 2. Sulfate is negative 2, so these cancel each other out. That compound is neutral. Next, sodium is positive 1, and chlorine is negative 1, so that's also neutral. So we're done there. Then the next step is to predict the states by, by using the solubility rule. So we have copper and sulfate, sorry, we have cobalt and sulfate. So let's look at it, says that sulfate uh, doesn't say so. So sulfate generally is soluble unless it's with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, mercury, or lead. So since cobalt and none of those, it means that this compound is going to be soluble, making it aqueous. And then sodium chloride, uh, sodium is a poly, it, it's a first column of the periodic table, so that means 
of the sodium chloride is going to be soluble. So in this case, we have a double replacement reaction that was not a precipitation reaction. As you can see, there's no solid that was produced. So the, finally, the last thing we have to do is just balance the chemical reaction. We're going to put a 2 in front of this, the sodium chloride, and everything is balanced. Last example, we have calcium bromide reacting with sodium phosphate. So the first step is just to write the charges. Calcium is positive 2, Br is negative 1, Na is positive 1, and then phosphate is a polyatomic ion with a negative 3 charge. Then we're going to switch the two positive ions. So this gives us NaBr and um, CaPO4. A phosphate is a polyatomic ion, so it acts as a one entity, so PO4 just it's one thing. Then transfer the charges over, sodium is positive one, Br is negative one, those cancel each other out, so this is already neutral. Then calcium, we have a positive two, and phosphate is negative three. That does not cancel each other out, so we can use the crisscross method, giving us three calciums and two phosphates. Then to pre predict the states, again, we look at the solubility rules. Na is, is alkali metal, and any alkali, any compound of alkali metal is going to be aqueous, it's going to be soluble. Uh, calcium phosphate, so we look at phosphate, it says that phosphates generally are insoluble unless it contains an alkali ion or ammonium ion, and calcium is neither of those, so that means this compound is going to be insoluble, so it's going to be a solid. Then balance this chemical reaction, so we're going to put the three in front here, to to oops, we're actually gonna have to put a two no we're gonna have to put a three here so we get six bromines so we have to put a six right here this gives six sodium so we have to put a two right here and then when we do that everything is balanced and if you're having trouble balancing chemical reactions take a look at um, my video about how to balance chemical reactions I go into that in detail and that's it we work through the three problems for precipitation reactions. One of them turned out not to be a precipitation reaction because no solid was produced. But as you can see, a precipitation reaction essentially is just a double replacement reaction. And you're going to approach it the same way. The only difference is you're going to use the solubility rules to help you determine the states of your product. Well, hopefully that made sense and it helped. Uh, and if it did, give this video a thumbs up, comment uh, what kind how, how did it help, if there was anything that's confusing, and then subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting up lots of video that's going to help you do better in chemistry and conquer chemistry.